Welcome back. In the last class, we were doing the law of demand. And in, the, in that, we talked about, we stated the law, we talked about the assumptions. And now in this class, I'm going to explain the law of demand with the help of an illustration, that is with the help of the demand schedule. Just have a look. Look at this. So law of demand can be explained with the help of the following demand schedule and in this we have taken the price as 15 when the price is 15 the units demanded in are 10 when the price falls to 10 the demand increases to 20 and when the price falls to 5 the quantity increases to 30 so that is what the schedule shows that as the price falls the demand the quantity demanded increases so this can be also illustrated with the help of this diagram here the same thing that we're going to we're going to plot it on the graph plot it on a diagram to show the demand curve sloping downwards because it has an inverse relation so we see when the price is five how much is the demand? It's 30. Right? When the price increases to 10, price, okay, price is shown on the y-axis and on the x-axis is the quantity. And further, when the price increases from 10 to 50, the units uh, decrease from 20 to 10. So, uh, we, we can see the expansion and contraction of demand here. In fact, we find uh, that, there is the, uh, that there is a downward slope of the demand curve. And that is itself the expression of the law of demand, which shows that there, is a, that there is an inverse relation between quantity demanded and the price. So uh, why, after all, does the demand curve slope downwards? Sometimes you do get, get a question like that. Or uh, why more of a good is purchased when its price falls? So, what does a downward slope of demand curve indicate? It indicates that more is purchased in response to fall in price. Thus, there is an inverse relationship between the own price of a commodity and its quantity demanded. So, the, this can be explained uh, in terms of these following factors. One is the law of diminishing marginal utility which we've already done. So as the consumption of a commodity increases, the marginal utility derived from each successive unit we know goes on falling, diminishing. So for every additional unit to be purchased, the consumer is willing to pay less and less price. And um, for it, for uh, to lure the consumer, you have to see that you bring down the prices. Okay. So we can talk about the income effect. That is, income effect. What does it, it income effect? What does it refer to? It is the effect on quantity demanded when real income of the buyer changes owing to a change in the price of the commodity. For example, with a fall in price, real income increases. So accordingly, demand for the commodity expands. There is something known as substitution effect. So what is that? Substitution effect refers to the substitution of one commodity for the other when it becomes relatively cheaper. Thus, when own price of the commodity X falls, it becomes cheaper in relation to the commodity Y. So, a commodity X is substituted for Y. So, uh, this is again expansion of demand for commodity X due to substitution effect. Then you have the size of uh, the consumer groups. That means when the price of a commodity falls, many more buyers can afford to buy it. Accordingly, demand for the commodity expands. So what are we talking about? Why, after all, does the demand curve slope downwards? And of course, different uses. A good may, ha a good may have several uses. Milk, for example, is used for making curds, cheese, butter. If the price of milk reduces, it will be put to different uses. So, demand for milk expands. So these are some of the reasons or some or the other reason fit why it should why the demand curve slopes downwards. So with that we maybe I'll expand a little more of 
on the these factors in the next class